The story begins when the sky emitted tons of golden lightning at the same time, and it struck down Linhai City at the Dragon Kingdom. Countless monsters wormed their way into reality from the other world, causing humanity to face the biggest calamity that it has ever seen. Thankfully, the heavens never abandon humanity. A mysterious mark suddenly appeared on the back of every human's hand, and through it, they awoke a variety of unique occupations. From then on, the era of changing occupations to become hunters was kick-started for humanity. Amongst the many who became awakened, there were only three people with mythic ranked classes, one of which is from the United States of America, a Ghostblade user named Alfard. From Russia, there's a Hell Dragon rider named Rastif, and lastly, the Frost Nation Frost Mage King, Quan Jixian. As the mythic ranked occupations far outclassed the rest, it led to the Lighthouse Kingdom, Russian, and the Frost Nation to overtake all other countries in their rate of progress on conquering other countries. A hundred years ago, a prodigy like them had once appeared in the Dragon Kingdom as well. Dragon Kingdom's top expert is named Asura. Within a mere ten years, he created the highest record ever found in China and became the first one to make it through the 70th world. However, when the strongest ninth rank monster wave invaded Earth, Asura, who has changed classes eight times, died defending against the rift. He sacrificed himself to protect the kingdom. It was the hundredth anniversary of Xu Luo's death as a hero. During the memorial ceremony launched in the capital city the day before yesterday, all the Dragon Kingdom's top hunters appeared to attend the ceremony. And at the same time, statistics showed that the kingdom had 12,350,000 awakeners for that year, which is 11.3% more than last year, and the highest record since the other world had first descended upon Earth 10 years ago. 10% of awakeners are currently made up of core hunters, which has greatly surpassed the number of awakeners that had been awakened during Asura's birth year. Because of that, they were hoping to witness another appearance of the next Asura. A man is lying down in his bare room. While listening to news that the main gate to the other world is about to open, hunters were advised to prepare themselves. The man looked lifeless with a bottle of pills beside him. Again, the news was repeated. But when the man heard that hunters are asked to prepare themselves, the man looked horrified. All of a sudden, he sat up. It was like he's a different person now. This man looked around to figure out where he was because he thought he'd die. His head hurt so much. Then he started seeing fragments of painful memories, like working a difficult job, being told that he's a trash, not being able to pay his brother's medical fees, complaining being a monster tamer in a poor family, and with all of these piling up, he decided to end his life by overdosing on pills. The confused man wondered whose memories are those. He never imagined that he would be reincarnated into the body of someone with the exact same name as him a hundred years later. He recalled that the man was a monster tamer. The monster tamer class mainly relies on their pets to fight. Other than raising their own level, their pet's growth attribute can't fall behind either. Someone had once analyzed that in order to nurture a powerful monster tamer, one would need to be at least as wealthy as an entire nation. To an ordinary person, awakening as a monster tamer would indeed be bad news. Now he knew the story of the good-for-nothing young Zhang Yue, who failed at life and took his own life. He looked at the picture on the wall. This reincarnated person was the opposite of that. He was once the strongest awakener in the whole dragon kingdom, and was well known with the name Asura, since he had already taken over the body and had been revived once again. He decided to bear all the man's responsibilities and regrets, and conquer the other world where the weak are at the mercy of the strongest. It's his gesture of showing his gratitude. There was an announcement again that the main gate to the other world is about to open. The man stood before the gate, and he opened it. A bright ring of light appeared. It was the spatial gate. He entered it. The system greeted Asura, and reported that he had been offline for 36,552 days. He stood there while several window screens opened. He had received ability power points of $221,066,496,000. The system congratulated him on being the first to defeat a ninth rank monster wave. He had completed the mythic rank achievement in a class of his own. For that, 
he had obtained a reward which is a mythic rank treasure, Supreme Divine Decree. The Supreme Divine Decree will be activated automatically. He also obtained a permanent buff, which is a 10,000-fold increase in earning ability power in the other world, whilst both online and offline. The effect has been applied to him, and he has obtained an additional 99x offline rewards, which totals to 2,110,143,893,503,000 ability points. He was surprised to see quadrillions of ability power. It was a generous reward for clearing the highest-ranked monster wave in the world. The system notified him that he also had obtained a class reset. He was asked to choose from one of the seven mythic rank core classes. The choices are Knight Undead Death Knight, Warrior, Dark Swordsman, Assassin, Shadow Reaper, Priest, Divine Priest, Mage, Hellfire Mage, Archer, Spectral Hunter, Monster Tamer, Necromancer. Asura awoke as an epic class warrior a hundred years ago, but the strongest core class in the other world during that time was actually the Monster Tamers. The only issue with that occupation is the astronomical amount of ability power needed for them to level up themselves and their pets, causing growth for that class to be immensely difficult. However, since he had been reincarnated and even have a million years worth of offline ability power, his top choice is naturally the Necromancer. The system congratulated him on becoming the other world's fourth mythic rank core hunter, Necromancer, Monster Tamer's advanced class. He received an initial 100 star rating. It was strong as expected of a mythic rank class. A Necromancer is a messenger revived from the underworld. A Necromancer has command over the strength of the dead. Only death is able to excite a Necromancer. A Necromancer has a magic attack growth, 25 star, mana growth, 18 star. Vitality Growth 20 Star, Physical Defense Growth 18 Star, and Magic Defense Growth 19 Star. It has skills like Harvest Souls, Spectre Evolution, and Death Reduction. An ordinary monster tamer pet's intellect is obtained through rare mission rewards, and it's impossible to improve their character. Asura didn't expect a necromancer to not only evolve their pets, but also be able to harvest other monsters and make them their pets as expected of a mythical rank class. In his previous life, he relied on an epic rank class to clear 70 worlds within merely 10 years and became the top ranker in China. Since he's starting out with a mythical rank class in that life, he decided to perfectly clear every last world and become the strongest not just in China, but the entire world. The sun rose. Asura entered a portal and was welcomed in the first world of the other world, the source of nightmares. The safe zone he has been matched to by the system according to his log and location is Doomsday Village. He was asked if he will be continuing to use the ID Asura, or if not, he must confirm his new ID. He decided to change his ID to zero. He made it sure that in his new life, he's destined to surpass Asura's existence, and the only thing that surpasses all else is zero. He walked around the other world. A woman was fascinated by how close it is to being in the real world. Another man was confused as well because they expected the other world to be filled with monsters. A man replied that they are in the safe zone and the monsters are outside of that. They were notified that the first world's mission had been released. It was in the mission panel. People started preparing for it like finding a party to join or the materials that they would need. The system window displayed details about the source of nightmares, first world. When darkness shrouded the earth, the monsters who were in a deep slumber underneath awake, and the world will eventually ruin into a calamity. As the sole survivor, the zero must break the doomsday pattern, break the multiple calamities, and crush the darkness. The first mission is to kill a total of 1,000 monsters in the first world. Second, he must collect a total of 10 silver coins by killing monsters or carrying out missions. When he has completed the above missions, he can activate the first world's boss instant teleportation tunnel, defeat the boss, and advance to the second world. Zero noticed that the normal layout of the other world didn't change much. He decided to buy some equipment first before doing the missions. He was welcomed in a shop. The equipment shop owner is Chelsea. He asked him what he needed. Zero also noticed that the system's equipment shop is also the same as before. It can only provide some basic crude items, 
Even the best equipment they have is only one star. Chelsea told Zero that if he isn't satisfied with those, he can provide a higher graded equipment for a few more copper coins. Zero dropped a bag filled with 100 copper coins, then he asked for a star magic staff. The other buyers around him were astonished. Zero received the staff. After that, people flocked to Zero. They were all surprised with his move since they were only given a total of 100 copper coins and he had spent all of them. One person added that one star magic stuff can't add much attack power either. He was advised that instead of buying a single one star weapon, he would be better off buying a full set of crude items. Zero thanked them for their advice and walked away. A woman expressed her opinion that although only the weapons with a higher number of stars can be refined, the attack power would also be increased. The man replied that refining weapons require ability power, and they can only be obtained through missions to farm monsters with a low drop rate. He added that there isn't even enough of such valuable things to level up. Only a brain-dead person would do that. They continued to gossip while watching Zero walk away. He judged him to suffer later on, since he doesn't have money left and had no Zero defensive power. They all thought that it's impossible to do anything without money. To the normal newbie hunter, it is indeed not worth it to spend all money on a one-star equipment. The ability power obtained by normal hunters from farming monsters is very limited, so it just wouldn't be possible for them to afford to refine one-star equipment. Zero's weapon is called Raging Inferno Magic Staff with a one-star. Its magic power is five and its level is zero. Zero is aware that he's lacking one thing, and that's the ability's power. When he spends one point of ability power on refining, he has a 10% chance of increasing his green attribute. The higher the attribute, the greater the cost of refinement, and the lower the chances of success. He was asked if he wanted to refine. He replied yes. He was prompted again, and he continuously replied to keep refining. His staff glowed as the refinement continued to be successful. He watched the notifications. And later on, he was informed that his equipment has already been upgraded to the highest tier. The system screen showed him that after 132 single-touch refinements with a total of 985 ability power points spent, he had obtained the gold attribute. Now his weapon is Scorching Pioneer Magic Staff. Refining 132 points showed the true power of having quadrillions of ability power points. His staff has the characteristic called Scorch, wherein every time the user attacks, it will inflict the enemy with a 3-second burn status. The enemy will lose 20 health per second. With that, Xeron's preparations are complete. It's time for him to put on a good show. At the First World, the origin of nightmares. It was the beginning of the nightmares of all the novice hunters. A hunter slashed a world with his sword, but it had no effect. The hunter was scared. It made him wonder what is the rank of that fucking monster. It had so much health that it's impossible to deal any significant damage, yet one strike from it will kill them. Suddenly, a gold orb of light appeared. It was magic that eliminated that monster. The burn effect from Scorching Pioneer Magic Staff has been inflicted. Zero watched the corpse of the monster. The system informed him that he had defeated that mutated giant rat which earned him 2 EXP and 1,000 points. 10,000-fold increase in ability points buff applied. Zero is a mythic hunter with maxed-out base attribute buff, as well as max-level equipment. Ordinary hunters need to team up to kill the mutated giant rat, yet I can kill one with a single shot. Other hunters noticed him. They were all curious about him since he dealt insane damage and he has all the good equipment. One woman wondered if he's an experienced hunter, but the guy refutes that. There's no way someone would have so many ability points to refine an early game newbie magic staff. They couldn't help but think of Zero as a big shot. Zero was thinking that since those level 1 monsters give him too little experience, he needed to kill monsters that are on a higher level than him to maximize his experience gain. In the first world, the origin of nightmares, other than low-ranked mutated giant rats, there's also level 3 to 4 poisonous spiders, level 5 to 7 armored scorpions, and level 8 to 9 frenzied wild boars. Lastly, the final boss of the first world, a level 10 berserk wild boar king. Now, his best option is to hunt the level 3 and above monsters at the abandoned factory. He was about to walk away. 
but he was blocked by those hunters. They wanted to recruit him in their party by enticing him that they have healer, tank, DPS. The women tempted him with their body too, but Zero was scared when he replied that he didn't need it, so they just backed off. They watched him walk away. Then they talked about his scary aura that's even worse than those monsters. They noticed that Zero was heading to the abandoned factory. They had heard that all the monsters in there have high levels and are extremely dangerous. They wondered if he intended to fight those monsters all alone. They couldn't help but think that the big shot is way different from regular people like them. There was a large rat with its mouth wide open. The screen showed that he had killed a level mutated giant rat. It granted him two EXP and a thousand ability points. Then he killed a level three poisonous spider which granted him eight EXP and three thousand ability points. He then killed another poisonous spider consecutively. Zero had leveled up, which also increased his vitality to 30 plus 12 mana and free 6 attribute points. He is currently at level 2, and 250 EXP points are required for the next level up. He targeted another spider. His attack created an explosion. Now, he only needs 100 EXP to level up. The scene was left with several monster corpses. He was congratulated for unlocking the first skill slot and obtained the starting skill. Tiny Fireball. He never thought that the level up reward for mythic rank hunters would be six times higher than ordinary hunters. Even by just leveling up by three levels, he already got as much as 18 free attribute points. The early game growth path of a monster tamer is the same as a mage. So, he still needs to minimize his casting time, stabilize his damage output, and increase agility. As for the starting skill, Normal hunters with limited ability points usually won't waste their points on upgrading it since it doesn't have much power. Zero smiled. Because again, ability points solve it all. He decided to max out. The system confirmed his action, and later on, he had already spent 50 ability points to upgrade. Eventually, his tiny fireball has transformed and become a medium fireball. Its damage has increased to 140%, and has gained a special effect of increasing the damage of burn every second by 6%. Zero liked it. Later on, he upgraded it to become an Ultra Fireball, a grade. It is the highest skill grade possible for his current class rank. He can upgrade once he has undergone his second class change. With that rate of progress, regardless of the outcome, he should be able to hit level 8 once he finishes the first two world missions. It will be enough once he challenges the final boss and completes the first clear of the first world. A groaning noise caught Zero's attention. He stood in front of a large door when he asked if someone's there. He opened the door. There he found a hunter whose leg was amputated. This person's name is Carl. He looked at the guy and pondered that aside from the hunter deaths being real, there is no difference between that world and a normal game. There are missions dungeons, and the NPC in front of him. Carl informed Zero that his wife and children have all been killed by monsters. He sought the help of the adventurer in front of him to kill the loathsome scorpions. The system informs Zero that a storyline has been triggered. He was asked if he will take on the quest, exterminate the scorpions. Zero looked at the equipment obtained from completing the NPC missions, and it's much better than those dropped from killing monsters. Since he only has a magic staff, the mission was worth doing. The mission details are displayed. He needs to exterminate the scorpions. It's a normal mission with a level 10 difficulty. Aside from getting rid of all the scorpions, he was also requested to eliminate the leader, the armored scorpion king. His reward would be plus 500 EXP, plus 1 silver coin, plus 300 random one-star equipment. Zero sense that something had moved, but he didn't see anything. He figured out that there aren't just monsters in there. But his priority for now is to complete the mission. There were several eyes watching him from the dark. It's been a while since he saw those scorpions. Armored scorpions creeped out. These are physical type, normal monsters which are at level 5. Basically, these monsters are scorpions that have mutated due to the environmental contamination. The entire body is covered with solid armor, which helps them resist a large amount of damage. When the scorpions have activated the skill guard, the effectiveness of Zero's attacks will decrease. It charged toward Zero, but he was ready for it. Zero's staff glowed. He hit it with his ultra fireball. 
the armored scorpion activated the skill charge. Zero was able to dodge it, and he prepared to release his magic again. It was so powerful that it engulfed the area in flames. With that, the system notified him that he had defeated a level 5 armored scorpion. He gained plus 115 EXP and 50,000 ability points. While the Ultra Fireball is extremely powerful, it drains the man very quickly. From what Zero could recall, when the number of armored scorpions drops below a certain threshold, the appearance of the armored scorpion king will be triggered much earlier. The monster had finally appeared. It was gigantic and menacing. Zero planned to kill it before all his mana was depleted. He released Ultra Fireball. The armored scorpion king swats it with its tail. It had very little to no effect. It was as strong and tough as Zero remembered it to be. Then it charges towards Zero. Zero was quick on his feet, to move aside and attack from another angle. He blasted his fireball and it burned the monster. He had defeated it. He commented that he was lucky because even though he used up his mana, he managed to stop it from moving. He just needs to finish it off to complete the mission. But then, someone appeared behind him. This man had his sword ready, and another man appeared and stabbed the claw of the scorpion. They planned to steal the final blow. Zero grabbed the man from approaching the scorpion. Zero knew they were there, and finally, they had shown themselves. They were surprised that Zero already knew their plan. Zero knew that even though there are some hunters that level up through honest means, there are also some that specialize in carrying out shady business of killing and stealing from others. It's a shame that they chose the wrong target. Since all the enemies that Zero had are thousand times stronger than this man, Zero released his power, and an image of a man appeared behind him. The bad hunter got scared. Zero didn't hesitate to blast him away with his fire. The ally of the bad hunter was stunned. He was under the impression that Zero had run out of mana. He asked how Zero could still use his skill. The man realized that Zero isn't a newbie. Zero replied that he just pretended. Had he not did that, they wouldn't show themselves. A purple fire appeared above the golden flames. The system congratulated Zero for activating the Necromancer class skill called Soul Harvesting while killing the Armored Scorpion King. He was asked if he would like to absorb the Armored Scorpion King as his pet. He commented that he's lucky to trigger the class so quickly. He absorbed it. Specks of gold flame fell to the ground. Then it turned to a dark violet flame underneath his feet. This flame approaches the enemy. The system informed Zero that he had obtained the armored Scorpion King as his pet, and this pet is intimidating the enemy. The Necromancer class effects have been activated. The loyalty of Zero's pet, the armored Scorpion King, had been maxed out. Zero knew that the reason why it is hard for a monster tamer to grow is because pets need to rely on the monster tamer's EXP to level up. In just the early game, double EXP are needed to level up. As the number of pets grows, the points needed to level them up increase exponentially as well. It's simply impossible for a normal person to afford it. However, EXP points are currently something that Zero had the most. So, he went to use it and upgrade to max level. The Armored Scorpion King's D rank skill guard has risen to A rank. Iron Body Rank A is a passive skill that decreases the damage received by the Armored Scorpion by 30%. The man asked who exactly Zero is because it's impossible for a normal monster tamer to be as strong as him. Zero revealed that from the moment he took on the mission, he already sensed that someone was secretly spying on him. He guessed that those guys are assassins who utilize invisibility to hide themselves and attack lone players. And then they happen to receive the mission at the same time, so they plan to ambush him at the last stage and reap the Scorpion King. The man realized that they had offended the wrong person, he knew he needed to run otherwise. Zero challenged him to show how strong he is. And in a flash, the armored Scorpion King hit the guy in the gut. The guy begged not to be killed. Zero replied that in a world where the wheel is fodder for the strong, if one wishes to consume others, one should be prepared to be eaten. The guy lost life in his eyes when he started to be eaten. After that, the NPC thanked Zero for helping him on his revenge. With that, he considered Zero his buddy. The system screen congratulated Zero for completing the mission. 
he had obtained Pi 500 EXP points, plus one silver coins, and 3,000,000 ability points. There's also an equipment called Magic Necklace and Armor Boots. Zero also leveled up to level four. Only 2,000 EXP points are required for the next level up. He decided to take a look at the equipment. The Magic Necklace is at level four with one star. It is a necklace that was rumored in Legends to have been made out of magic itself. It's said that if a person wears it, they would be able to obtain an immense amount of magic. The armor boots are at level 5 with 1 star, and it's a solid boot that provides hunters with a certain amount of defense. Zero commented that he's catered according to his needs. He got equipment that boosts his mana after desperately needing something to strengthen it. He went on to refine the item to the max. He used a total of 24,999 points and received the golden attribute equipment, the sacred origin of magic. Then he spent 2,985 ability points and received hero protection armor. With these two pieces of equipment, the armored scorpion king and him will reach level 5 faster. A screen appeared in front of him. The screen displayed a zone announcement. All hunters in the Doomsday Village were told that the hidden dungeon, the Apocalyptic City Level 5, has appeared near the Doomsday Village. The dungeon will remain open for an hour. All hunters were advised to head towards the dungeon to carry out the mission. The first to clear the dungeon will receive a generous reward. The people were surprised to hear about the Level 5 hidden dungeon. Zero knew that being the first to clear it isn't impossible given his current strength. He decided to go for it. The portal had already appeared, so everyone was preparing for it by recruiting a party member. Most of them are aiming to clear it first because of the rewards. A man explained that given their current level, entering the dungeon would be equivalent to suicide. They may earn money, but they might not be alive to spend it. The guy reiterated that it was the sole reason that they should form a team. Zero noticed that there are quite a number of people who want to challenge the dungeon. Someone shoved him to get out of the way. It was a knight in shining gold armor. Someone called this person President. People were curious about who this person was. He is Liu Yao, the son of the wealthiest person in Linhai City, Liu Yue. The three biggest pharmacies in Linhai City are all owned by the Liu family. They have a net worth of over billions of dollars. The young master Liu has always acted pompous. Even his underlings are fully equipped with one-star equipment that costs at least tens of thousands. A woman noticed Zhang Yue. It's Yue's ex-girlfriend. Her name is Lin Yue. -er. She approached him and mocked him for being a normal monster tamer who can't even afford his own rent and is thinking of fighting in the dungeon. Zero was fierce when he asked her if she had a problem with that. She was shocked. She expected him to beg her for another chance since he's a simp. Then she clings on to Yao and tells Yue that only Yao is qualified to be the first to clear the unique dungeons, so he should just stop daydreaming. Yao hugged Yue Air -er and mocked Yue for being dumped and advised him to just move on. Yue nonchalantly replied that she was just an old pair of used shoes and Yao could take her if he wanted to. And as for the unique dungeon, he felt that the one who's having such wishful thinking is someone else. That made Yue -er furious. She wants Yao to teach him a lesson. And instead of being scared, our boy smiled and advised them to treasure their lives more. Yue -er shouted that he's just acting tough when he's a good for nothing. Yao finds it weird that he can't see the man's class clearly, as if it was purposely hidden. Yao waved goodbye since he's in a rush to challenge the dungeon. Yao and his team went to the portal and reminded them to bring their resurrection scrolls. Everyone was pumped up. One man tapped Zero's shoulder and told him to admit defeat, since poor losers like them can't beat those with silver spoons. Zero replied that if the guy sees himself as a poor loser, he should think of ways to become better and stronger. In his head, Zero thought of the original owner of the body and knew that he was indeed a poor loser. But he argued that it had nothing to do with him since he's Asura. The guy replied that Zero is good at bluffing. The man argued that all those men had a resurrection scroll that cost $3,000 per piece. People expected that the Supreme Guild would be the one to clear the dungeon first. Zero knew that most dungeons have a boss monster guarding it. His current strength is more than sufficient to deal with the normal mobs, but he's afraid it isn't enough to deal with the boss monster. 
He can only guarantee a win if the armored scorpion and him both level up to level 5 and are fitted with both proper equipment and max level skills. He looked around. Meanwhile, Yao and the others appeared on the other side of the portal. Yueir complained that she was just completely humiliated, but he didn't seek revenge for her. Yao glared at her and told her that there's a lot of people. The losses outweigh the gains if they consider the off chance that someone uses the excuse of Yao killing a hunter as grounds to defame the Liu family and the guild purposely. He assured her that he will make that guy kneel in front of her. Yueir thanked him for that. In another setting, a fire was blasted. Zero was fighting the monsters. A normal monster tamer's pet needs the same amount of experience points as its master. Luckily, the amount of experience points needed by the pet in the necromancer class is reduced to half. In the early game, Zero had to let the armored scorpion kill a few normal mobs, and it would be able to level up quickly. Zero continued to fight. The area was filled with smoke. Behind the rock is the lackey of Yao who watched Zero. They realized that they misjudged him. As Zero steps forward, he was blocked by a pretty woman who seduced him to carry them. But he's not a simp and just replied, no way, and moved forward. The system informed everyone that there's only 10 minutes left. Zero decided to raise the defense of the equipped level 5 armored scorpion. It will act as a meat shield at the vanguard while Zero focuses on doing damage from the back. The armored scorpion king roared loudly. Zero also used equipment that speeds up mana recovery to help him cast fireballs consecutively and increase his efficiency in killing monsters. With all that, ten minutes was more than enough. He entered the portal. The area was engulfed in flames. Yao and the others were hurt. Yao complained that just a bit more and they would have defeated the boss. But his subordinate explained that they stand no chance against level 7 monsters when they are only at level 2. Yuer told Yao that since the monsters are too powerful, they should just focus on surviving. The subordinate agreed with her and expressed that they should take the chance to use the resurrection scroll to leave while the monsters haven't caught up. Yao sensed something. Someone was coming. They all looked on the cliff where a man stood and were surprised to see that it was Zero. Yao was furious to see him in that dungeon. He asked Zero if he's not afraid of dying. Zero smirked at him. It triggered Yao to challenge Zero in a battle. Yuer and the subordinate tried to stop him, emphasizing that their survival comes first. Before Yao leaves, he tells Zero that it would be better if he dies in the dungeon rather than Yao killing him. They system welcomed Zero inside the dungeon, where his mission is to kill the dungeon's guardian, the armored scorpion lever, which is a boss monster at level 7. Zero was relieved that they're gone, since he won't be bothered with the noise now. A few moments later, the ground cracked, and the boss monster emerged from underneath. It roared loudly. Zero noticed that its health bar alone is several times stronger than the minions. He instructed his pet to attack. The two scorpions fought each other. Zero was happy with the upgrades of his pet. Then he used his ultra fireball, which caused 206 critical damage. The large boss monster stood before him. It attacked him, but his pet protected him. Zero created several fireballs and released a sextuple shot. The boss monster's face was slightly burned. Zero attacked from the front while his pet held the boss monster's body. The enemy roared. It was the last roar before his body collapsed on the ground. Zero commented, How freaking weak. The system screen displayed that he had cleared the level 5 dungeon, Apocalyptic City, and he obtained the dungeon scroll as a reward. The people were surprised with this announcement. They wondered if Zero is some kind of big shot to be that powerful. They all wondered how he killed the Guardian monster when almost everyone is at level 1 to level 3 and the Dungeon Guardian monster is at level 7. Yao asked if the person was Yuer's ex-boyfriend since the announcement was released just a few minutes right after the guy entered. Yuer found it ridiculous. She argued that her ex-boyfriend doesn't even have a pet, so there's no way that he would clear that dungeon all alone. Yao was convinced that someone else must have done it. 
He struck the ground with his sword while saying that the one who had killed the scorpion leader is extraordinary. He told his subordinates to find the person with the ID, Zero, immediately and scout him. The item drop rate from boss monsters is indeed much higher compared to normal monsters. There were items like the copper coins, blueprints, and even equipment. But the most important item is the scroll. Unupgradable dungeon scroll is worth far more than a few thousand dollars. Zero decided to upgrade his scroll straight to the max level. A challenger rank dungeon scroll has never appeared in the first world. If it goes into the market, at the very least, it should go for several hundreds of thousands. To a normal hunter, it is undoubtedly a huge sum of money. But Zero's goal was to clear the other world. A notification window displayed that Zero had used a level 5 challenger grade dungeon scroll. He received one gold coin and a bounty mission, which is to rescue the survivor. Upon completion of this mission within the time limit, he will be receiving a generous reward. Zero examined the mission and found out that it has a difficulty rating of 100 and an unknown reward that only requires him to escort an NPC. He also received a level 10 map, but unfortunately, Zero is only at level 5. And in addition to that, the monsters that he'll be facing, wild boars, like to appear in groups so it would be difficult to deal with them. He decided not to stress about it and focus on finding the survivor, Ai Lin. In the middle of the forest, a girl was being chased by a wild boar. All of a sudden, the wild boar erupted in flames. Slowly, the smoke clears, and it revealed Zero. The little girl was glad that a big brother came to save her. The notification window displayed that the survivor, Ai Lin, has been found. The time remaining for his mission is ten hours. An angry wild boar appeared. Zero had noticed that the wild boars in the forest got agitated the moment he found Ai Lin. The wild boar attacked them. Zero released a fireball. The wild boar kept receiving burn damage. But then, several wild boars surrounded them. Zero commented that these wild boars had a lot of stamina. A mythic rank hunter with a gold attribute staff and an A-rank fireball was still unable to deal proper damage to them. If Ai Lin gets killed in there, Zero will fail the mission. Zero took out the armored scorpion and instructed it to protect him. The wild boars charged altogether, but the armored scorpion blocked its attack. Zero released an ultra fireball. It landed on the wild boar. The system notified him that he was able to defeat a level 10 frenzied wild boar, which earned him plus 40 EXP and plus 100,000 ability points. Zero informs the Armored Scorpion that their strategy is working. He encouraged the Armored Scorpion to fend off a few more, and they would level up soon. Our MC consecutively defeated those wild boars. The wild boars keep coming, and Zero didn't have enough mana to fend off the attack of the wild boar wave. Ai Lin asked if he's okay. Zero assured her that he will definitely bring her back. Unexpectedly, a wild boar had run into Zero. In response, Zero hit it with the Ultra Fireball, and it roasted the wild boar. But even then, it still managed to resist the fiery skill. Fortunately, Zero had a bit of health, otherwise he would have been dead after a single hit from the wild boar. He also noticed that the armored scorpion can't hold on for much longer either. Zero didn't expect this mission to be so bothersome. He attacked a wild boar, causing its HP to drop. At the same time, Zero was notified that he had leveled up to level 7. Because of the situation, he decided to upgrade his attack power first. In addition, he used the equipment obtained from farming the scorpions earlier. The item is called Glorious Boss Battle Ring, level 7. It has a penetrate effect, which means that the attacks off someone with the item equipped ignore 20 of the opponent's defense. Again, Zero used a fireball. But this time, it's a more powerful one. It even looked like an energy ball. And it enveloped the fireball and was killed instantly. Zero was amazed. Earlier, he had to cast 80 fireballs to deal any damage. But now, he could kill it with just two fireballs. Zero consecutively attacked. After some time, he looked haggard, but he managed to finally shake off the wave of wild boars. Now, he just needs to bring Ai Lin safely to the Doomsday Village, and the mission will be completed. Someone then appeared, and was surprised to see that Zero had returned from the dungeon alive. It was this loser Liu Yao, and with him was Yu Er. 
Zero shooed them away since he doesn't want to deal with small fries. Yueer sang praises for Yao and requested for him to teach Zero a lesson. Yao unsheathes his sword. Zero challenged Yao if he could really kill him. Yu then dashed forward as he wanted to see whether Zero's mouth was sharper than his sword. Yao's blade hit Zero's shoulder but it did not penetrate it. Yao couldn't believe it. Yueer too, since Yao couldn't deal any damage to Zero despite Zero being just an unarmed beast tamer. Zero asked if he's done and it's his turn now. Zero showed off his power by releasing a swirl of large flame. And upon seeing that, Yao panicked and threatened Zero that he's from a powerful family, and if he laid a hand on him, he would regret it. But our boy gave Zero fucks with all that blabbering. He released his fireball and Yao was blasted away. Yao complained how he ended up in that state with just a single shot. He turned to dust, leaving his golden armor behind. Zero watched the screen as he called Yao an idiot. In the other world, a hunter's name is usually white. However, when a hunter launches a malicious surprise attack on another hunter with a white name, the assailant's name will turn gray for a short period of time. During this period, the victim's retaliation will be considered an act of defense, and they will not receive any evil value. If the victim fails at retaliating and is killed, the assailant's name will turn red, and they will receive evil value. Under the rules of the other world, the assailant will not be able to log out of the other world even if they enter a safe zone, unless they kill a sufficient number of monsters to clear their evil value or they wait for their death. Not only will a hunter's levels and experience points decrease when they die, a large number of their equipment and items will also be dropped. Yuer was taken aback that Zero killed Yao in one shot. She wondered when he became so powerful. She panicked when she saw Zero approaching her, especially when she couldn't use the resurrection scroll since it can only be used twice in a span of seven days. She already used one to escape the dungeon earlier. If she uses another one now, she wouldn't be able to use it again later. Out of fear, she coaxed him with endearment and sweet words, but Zero and Ai Lin nonchalantly walked past her. Since Yueer didn't attack Zero, he would be affected if he attacks her. He decided not to waste his time because of insignificant people. Yueir watched them walk away. This bitch then felt angry that Zero dared to ignore her. A few moments later, at a certain home. Ai Lin thanked Zero since she was able to come back home. The system window congratulated Zero for completing the Challenger rank bounty mission called Rescue the Survivor. He received Ice Magic Staff, a skill book called Tiny Icicle, and a pet egg. He had also leveled up in terms of his vitality, plus 30, mana, plus 12, and free attribute points, plus 6. Zero is currently at level 8 and will need 9,500 EXP to level up again. Our MC then summoned the staff. It is a level 8 ice magic staff. It is a magic staff with an extremely strong affinity for the power of ice. And since he had almost infinite ability points, Zero decided to refine the staff and he had done it 144 times, the maximum allowable amount. He had used a total of 22,356 ability points, turned the equipment to a golden attribute equipment, the Frost Shatterer Scepter. The higher the grade of the equipment, the more ability points needed for its refinement. Fortunately, that amount isn't an issue for Zero. Aside from the staff, he also got other loot. He took out the pet egg that he had obtained. It was a normal grade, so he wasn't really excited about it. Also, he got quite a few normal grade pet eggs while farming monsters just now. He decided to use all of them as fodder for the armored scorpion. The armored scorpion liked that idea. It was followed by several notifications that his pet, the armored scorpion, consumed the pet eggs. Later on, he was congratulated by the system since his pet has evolved into a silver armored scorpion, elite grade. The evolved version looked cool with its silver body. Zero was quite pleased with the two-star magic staff and a silver-armored scorpion. Together, with the golden equipment contributed by Yao earlier, Zero should be able to challenge the final boss of the first world. However, before that, he needed to go back and replenish his supply of some materials. He walked out of the portal. It was already dark outside. He was back in his room. Then, his phone rang. Yue picked it up. It was a call about the 390000 that he owed for his brother's medical bill. 
If he won't pay, the hospital will halt his brother's treatment. Our boy then asked for the payment card number for the hospital, as he stated that he will transfer it within 10 minutes. It was not a big deal since he could just sell a few pieces of the golden equipment, and he'll be able to earn a few million. He planned to help the original owner of the body to save his brother as a way to repay the original Yue. But then he received a warning that the equipment is bound and it cannot be traded or dropped. He was dumbfounded. He commented that it was a downside of having a 10,000-fold increase buff. Without the ability to trade his equipment, he only has slightly over $10,000 even if he sells all of his silver coins. It pushed him to think of ways to earn money. He looked at his cell phone. He searched and found out that the hourly pay for normal boosting services is too low. But then, he saw something interesting. There was one post hiring a booster for 300,000 gold. A lot of people engage in the post. Yue contacted the person. With a creepy smile on his face, he was intrigued with the deadly bounty. Thank you all for watching. Please watch this next Giga Chad video, and I'll see you guys next time. Also, support the channel by joining the Summon Club membership. You can also support by just liking the video and being awesome.